Yikes! It is the year of stablecoin wreckage, right? Reckoning. Um, but yeah, Polkadot and Akala, it, it's been kind of a kind of a poop show, right, guys? Little little poop tornado, poop nado, poop nado cash. Oh man, it's got to exist already. Does somebody already make that as a meme token? Can we do that, community? Can we do that? Does someone just handle that over on Polygon? Uh, I'll even, I'll whatever. I'll front, I'll front the uh, the mint fees. Poop NATO cash. We got to make it a thing. We got to meme it into existence. But Akala USD, AUSD, they had a 1.3 billion dollars extra because they just minted too much. There, there you go. 1.3 billion dollars, too many, uh, too many stable coins. So over the weekend, exploiters breached a bug in the platform's liquidity pool to mint 130 million stable coins. Um, resulting in a uh, severe pool fund imbalance, and it lost its peg. Akala held a community vote, proposing to burn nearly 1.3 billion coins to offset the breach. Akala dollar. Okay, no, now it, it does seem that they did this incorrectly. So, it's not that they burned 1.3 billion misminted stable coins. Um... <laughs> and fork torque tornado into Twister. Here's the thing. On stream, I would never tell anybody that they should go and clone the repositories for Tornado Cash. You should never do that. Never, ever clone the repositories for the Tornado Cash smart contracts and then go deploy them somewhere else that they can be self-hosted, like, um, you know, uh, on a permissionless and encrypted uh, repository platform. Never do that. Okay. As long as we understand each other. People who do that are bad. All right, so fast facts. Yep, they held a community vote. They decided to burn 1.3 billion coins. I think that they burnt Akala coins. I think that they burnt the collateral, the corresponding collateral that would go into it, which in my mind is fine, right? Like, get rid of the... Uh... <laughs> Paul D, I'll not do that. Super hard. Awesome. I appreciate that support you guys are the best 16 wallets executed these outflow transactions said akala in its twitter post akala did not reveal how much it lost but crypto analysts on twitter estimated akala loss the akala loss at 1.6 million dollars how in the world are all these numbers correlated um but burning 1.3 billion akala i'm sure was a collateral because it was probably over collateralized and losing 1.6 million in value to try to cover up a $130 million overprint of stable coins, right? Or a hidden inflation of stable coins. You can't make this stuff up, but here's the funny thing. I'm sure that we that things like this have happened with our fiat currencies, but we just ne it never makes the news. When's the last time you heard of somebody being a career uh, money laundering criminal, right? A career money printing, money laundering criminal, um, like the, whatever, the catch me if you can guy, Frank Abagnale. Where, who was the last Frank Abagnale that we ever saw trotted out on the mainstream media for forging $20 bills or $100 bills. We know it happens. We just don't ever see it in the news. So why are we always seeing news about crypto exploits? It does beg some questions, doesn't it? I think it does. Anyway, they're trying to get rid of the printed dollar anyway, too. So I guess they're, they're going to try to solve that problem and sweep it under the rug before we ever notice that it's mainstream news. But on the note of stable coins and issues, the need for caution. Die stable coin holders need to be cautious now. And here's why. We talked about this on last night's segment. And I said it very personally, very poignantly. I wish that I could just rely on die as a stable coin. But I'm concerned about MakerDAO's move to sell its USDC into Ethereum because it will not be an over collateralized debt position usdc was a one-to-one -one backing for die they won't have that one-to-one -one backing if they move it into any other digital asset it could be eth it could be wrapped bitcoin it could be anything it could be wrapped doge right on ethereum and it won't necessarily give them that peg it'll just give them a collateralized debt position that if they don't choose a ratio um, won't give us the full story like if they sell for example, uh, if they sell $3 billion worth of USDC into $3 billion worth of Doge, well, we've seen Doge fluctuate, fluctuate recently to as low as about 50% of its current value, right? About 8 about eight to um, eight to 12 cents, I guess was maybe 10 cents was its, its recent low. But the point is that if they don't have an over-collateralization ratio of that wrapped Doge, if that's the, the direction they choose to go instead of Ethereum, of about 200%, we're um <laughs> oh, use a use a doge term we're boned 
right? We got problems. We need to over collateralize. They need more of that asset than the amount of stable coins that they want to print from it, is my point. And with USDC, it was easy, right? Like one to one, every dollar you put into the collateral is can let you print a dollar of die. We're out of that territory now. They're trying to go a different direction because they're worried about USDC sanctioning their addresses, right? Or they're worried potentially about the amount of dye that's gone through Tornado Cash resulting in Circle sanctioning the USDC treasuries of MakerDAO. I think they have every right to be concerned about that, uh, by that. And I think that they really should do something and they should do it fast. But I think that's going to require that they claw back some of the supply and that will that will force Maker Dow to take a hit. So it's a bit of an issue. Um, Paul D says, that's a SHIB term. The SHIB army is going to be super mad. It's true. They're going to be strong mad. Mad strong. Then, uh, sorry, big mad. Big, big, big mad. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> yeah, their madness is going to be bussing. <sighs> oh my gosh. I'm getting dumber by the second. I'm becoming one of them. I'm sorry, guys. It was a good, we had a good run while we, while it lasted. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> these kids. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to shake my fist at a cloud. But uh, yeah, they're looking for stability. They're trying to sell off that USDC. And this is the current this is the current breakdown of the die collateral. 51% of the current supply backed by USDC. Tiny sliver of wrapped Bitcoin, ETH. There you go. Jeez, some other derivatives. It's just not good. It's not good. USDC and Circle, they've just they've proven that they're willing to be overly eager to comply, right? It's like, dude, there's no legal precedent. There is um like let's work backwards from legality back to morality. There's no legal precedent, which means that it's entirely possible that the US Treasury, the OFAC, uh, OFAC their their sanction could be deemed to uh to have like no merit. It, it could be totally baseless. It could be that this is brought to legal action and Coin Center is trying to do so. That it could be a legal action proves that there's no merit to their claim that it should be sanctioned and that it does get peeled off of that list, meaning that Circle is causing damages right now by jumping in too early without there being any kind of legal precedent. But step back, the ethical obligation of Circle is not to start sanctioning other addresses automatically. Right, they don't have an ethical obligation to do that. They have, they have an ethical obligation to prevent payment uh, payment inflows to Tornado Cash in the future, but they don't have any ethical obligation to prevent uh, the USDC outflows from the Tornado Cash contracts now. If anything, they've got an ethical and a fiduciary obligation to people who hold USDC to let them get their USDC, let them get it out. Right. So I, I've got a huge problem with that. And then, of course, the morality question is like, no, it's completely immoral, completely immoral to mess with people's uh, money when uh, when it's viewed as cash. Right. When it's viewed as uh, digital cash, totally immoral to take that from people, totally immoral to rob individuals and cause damage to individual holders. So shame on circle. I do not like what they're doing at all. And it makes me very much not want to hold USDC if I can avoid it. Um but unfortunately, that means the trickle-down effect is going to hit die as well. So, yeah, if you have die, be careful. MakerDAO is talking about, there you go, $3.5 billion ETH market buy. Ugh. Um, but they need to over-collateralize, which means they're going to have to, yeah, cause an issue. <laughs> yeah. Vitalik, er, this seems like a risky and terrible idea. If ETH drops a lot, value collateral would go way down, but CDPs, collateral debt positions, would not get liquidated. So the whole system would risk become a, becoming a fractional reserve. Yup. Um, you know, he's not perfect, but I do love a lot of the quotes from Vitalik. There's, there's a, he's got a lot of quotable quotes, but be careful if you're into die.